and with Silopostli said, Mother, you must not fear. I will watch over you well being. No one will ever be able to harm you. In Mexican society, we have a strange duality. Generally speaking, we exemplify a macho society, but on the other hand, we also suffer from mamitis. This means a very strong attachment to the mother figure. A clear example of this can be seen in the films of the golden age of Mexican cinema where we often encounter the Mexican macho, dressed as a mariachi, dog, womanizer and drinker. But at the same time, he is also prone to crying and heavily attached to the mother's prone strings. Perhaps part of this attachment comes from the prehispanic hero. There are indeed many references to the feminine aspects since then. The most well known being the unrelated to Cuatlique. Cuatlique is perhaps the quintessential example alluding to the mother in the Hispanic era. The word itself obviously needs to be analyzed for its meaning. First and foremost, Cuatlicue is a word in the Nahuatl language. In other words, we shouldn't assume that this term was used by all indigenous groups, as only Nahuatl speaking groups referred to it as such. For example, nowadays we can even see different ways to naming the mother. Some examples include Nancy in Nahuatl. Nana in Mistec, Xna in Zapotec, Tag in Mije, Ma in Triqui, and Na in Mayan. However, what is interesting is that in the translation of Cuatlicue, we will not find an explicit reference to the mother. Well, this word is composed of two other words. Coatl means snake, and Que derives from Cuauhtl, which means skirt, or iprun in Spanish. Thus, its most accurate translation is she of the skirt of snakes. Surviving the conquest is a monolith that represented her among the Mexica Tenochcas. This monolith represents the famous Cuatlicue. In this sculpture, we can see intricately carved intervine snakes forming her skirt. However, this is not the only one that survived. We also have the so-called Cuatlique of Coscatlan. At first glance, it also stands out with its skirt formed by snakes. Thus, its symbol clearly explains why it's called She of the Skirt of Snakes. But, where can we find the association with the mother figure? To find them, we have to go back in time. First and foremost, we find narration about her, but from the European perspective. With the recently arrived Spaniards in the continent, most of them were afraid, terrified and disgusted by this type of art. This Cuatlicue could have been appreciated by some of the first Spaniards who arrived in Tenochtitlan, such as Cortés, Bernal Díaz del Castillo, and several others. And well, we can summarize their feelings with the words of another Spaniard named Gonzalo Fernández de Oviedo y Valdés, the first chronicler of the no-called Indies, regarding the art of these cultures. The abominable and damned figure of the demon, with many heads and tails, misaping and terrifying, with cunning and furious jacks, with large fangs, 
Disproportionated Ears, Dragonlike Fear Eyes, and a Fear Serpent, and of very different kinds, so terrifying that even the least frightful inspires fear and admiration. We can understand this explanation because when we see it, we perceive skulls, hearts, and snakes. These are symbols that, in the European vision, would obviously be associated with the devil. For example, taking the snake has an example. It was a form that the devil illegally adopted to tempt Adam and Eva in paradise. Obviously, their mentality, totally influenced by Christianity, was not capable of seeing beyond that. Their upbringing only allowed them to believe that anything unrelated to their God, Jesus, and the Virgin Mary was evil and diabolical. Now, we must recognize one thing. Among these indigenous cultures, they did not have the demonic fear of these representations. However, Quatlique also represented aspects to be feared among the original inhabitants. So let's delve into their worldview, as we ask the various accounts that speak of her. While Quatlique is definite as the mother of all, she did not exist from the beginning of time, has someone else created her as well, because before that, there was nothing. However, one day, a being called Ometeotl, the primordial lord, thought and invented himself. After creating himself, he began to generate everything else that would constitute the universe. But within this, the duality of masculine and feminine already converged. It was as if it were a process of cell division. Ometeol started to unfold himself. His first unfolding was into Ometekutli, the Lord of Duality, and Omesiwatl, the Lady of Duality. These dual aspects are called Tonakatekutli and Tonakatesiwa, the Lord and Lady of our flesh in other chronicles. But their process of unfolding didn't stop there. They began to create many other dual things. Thus, each one engendered new manifestations that focused on specific elements of what would become the universe, but always maintaining that dual principle. Therefore, one of the Motekutli's first manifestation is Shutekutli, the Lord of Fire, the one who generates life, warmth, and life. And on the feminine side, Omesiwad manifests Haskwatlikwe, she of the skir of snakes, having been created. Where does Kwatlikwe find her place in the created universe? Obviously, outside of the myths, we know that the process of Earth's creation took billions of years. During this period, parts of debris in space began to solidify and come together to eventually create what we call Earth and the other celestial bodies in the universe. Thus, the grand scale conception of Quatlique is none other than the Earth itself. The Earth, in itself, speaks to us of that creation process that lasted millions of years. And this concept of Quatlique has Earth is not exclusive to the cultures later referred to as Mesoamerican. Nearly all Asian cultures identify the Earth as the mother of all, giving it their own names in each language. For example, among Indian peoples, it is called Pachamama, or among the Greeks, Gaia or Hea, which translates precisely to Earth. Therefore, while we can see at first glance, myths and legends that speak of fantastic beings creating one another, 
in reality, they were somehow trying to explain the origin of the world they observed. In their minds, the air that they treat upon had to have been created in some way, and if we, as human beings, require a man or woman to be created with the woman living life, then someone or something must have given life to her as well. This is where the concept of Ometeotl comes into play, and the capacity to give life and thus be a mother were reinforced with other legends that tell us that the creative process initiated by Ometeotl did not stop with Quatlique. Now it was her task to continue creating life. And so, just to give a few examples, she created Koyushauki, the sense of Wisnagwas, and Huitzilopochtli himself. There is another account that states she also engendered the 400,000 gods and humans who would go on to populate the world. And by extension, she also created all humans and living beings that we still see today. Thus, Quatlique is the Supreme Mother, but at the same time, a DFI being in the worldview. To emphasize her importance and transcendence, she received other names such as Tonantzin, an Awad word known composed of three words, two, or, Nanti, mother, and Sin, reverential diminutive. Thus she is, or, venerable mother. She is also known as Teteoina, mother of divinities, or Teotenantzin, the cherished mother of the divinities. And although there are myths and legends, they contain logic and knowledge that we now call scientific. It is logical to think that the earth had to be created first, so that living beings could walk upon it and inhabit it. But, as you can imagine, the original worldview is not easy to understand, especially considering the influence of European contamination. Regarding the creation aspect of Quatlique, it leads us to the question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? In other accounts, it is said that Ometeot created four sons, known as the Tezcatlipocas. And Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl were responsible to creating the air. In this history, the air is embodied under the name Zipactli. The best translation of this word is the first life, alluding to the origin of everything. However, this word is commonly known as the caiman or crocodile. There is a clear parallel between Quatlique and the legendary Zipactli, which was believed to be an enormous aquatic creature hunted by Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl. And the attribute they share is related to reptiles. Unlike us mammals, reptiles are beings that are born from eggs, they were assigned a sense of great antiquity, considered very ancient beings. And indeed, they are. As turtles, crocodiles and other reptiles have existed since the time of dinosaurs, even outliving them. Thus, the notion of antiquity and longevity were assimilated by Quatlique and Zipactli. Both of them have a kind of roof, tough and cracked skin, clearly characteristic of reptiles, while Zipactli has this type of skin all over its body. In Quatlique, we find this physical characteristic mainly in her skin and other reptilian parts. Therefore, the notions of antiquity and the symbolisms of the air combash, representing gestation, birth, but also the death that conditions the ephemeral nature of life. So, 
For now, let it be reminded that Watlicue is the heir personified, and it is clear that this conception was not understood at all by the Spaniards. However, this is just the beginning. As in upcoming videos, we will continue discussing more symbols and characteristics of the mother of all. Quatlique.